Hi everyone, welcome to your QC video. I am going to demonstrate for you today how to do basic QC in the Student Blood Bank Lab. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you all the QC that we do in this class, but hopefully after you use the form a few times and go through the procedures, you'll be able to tell how you need to do QC that is not demonstrated here. So first I want to reorient you to this paper, the QC sheet which is adapted from the, the blood bank lab, um, modified for our use. And recalling that across the top of this QC sheet, you're gonna see cells. So here we have screening cells and reagent cells. So SC1 stands for screening cell one, SC2 stands for screening cell two, and these are marked by Roman numerals in your reagent rack. Now for the first part of the semester, I, we are not going to be actually QCing the screening cells themselves, but we'll be using them to QC some of our antisera. So we don't need to use both of them. And I'm going to tell you that both of these cells, when we uh, get them in pairs, they both have the D antigen, which is what we're after in this QC video. Therefore, whether you use screening cell 1 or screening cell 2 does not matter in this first module because they both have the antigen we want. So some of your racks are going to have a 1 and some of your racks are going to have a 2 and that's okay. So here we have across the top the cells. We have A1 cells, we have B cells, we have A2 cells. We also have phases of reactivity. We have immediate spin which stands, which is IS, 37 degree incubation and IAT or AHG. This is after the addition of your anti-IgG. CC stands for check cells. Also here you'll notice that here I have an immediate spin column and something called new. New is to be used if you have to get a second bottle out for the day, maybe you ran out or it stopped working. So you would need to re-QC it and this is where you would put that second result under the new. Okay. Going down the left column we have our antisera. So here's anti-D, RH control which looks like this for right now, anti-A, anti-B, anti A comma B, please don't call this anti AB. It is not AB, it is A comma B and core QC. We're not really going to talk about core QC yet. This is used when we're going to uh, QC the screening cells in the second module. So for today I'm just going to write a not done. Notice there's all this gray area as well. The gray area is not to be written in. How you can read this form is that if you need to QC your anti-D reagent, you travel across the form and you find the white box. The white box is located under screening cell two. You can also use screening cell one in this, for this first module. And it's in the IS phase, which means you just drop the reagents, spin, and read. So if you forget how to QC, say, anti-A, you can come to the form, look at anti-A, travel across the form till you see the white box under the A1 cells. This is also done at immediate spin. And if you're confused and you're not sure, then use the procedure for which the reagents are used in, such as anti-A is used in the ABO procedure, the blood types. Look at what the blood type calls for. It calls for one drop of anti-A, one drop of cells, in this case the A1 cells, spin, and read. Remember, QC does not involve patient material. In this case, you know both components, the antibody and the antigen. So you should know what to expect for the reaction. If I put anti-D in a tube and a, t a cell containing the D antigen, I expect this to be positive. If I use an RH control, which is a negative control, with no antibodies in it, then I expect this result to be negative. There's no anti-D in it. Okay. So if you put anti-A with A1 cells, you better get a pretty strong positive, or we should investigate. The bottom part of this form is the DAT QC. And you'll notice, again, across the top, we have reagent cells, either Coombs control cells, which look like this. There's a big check mark on them. These are O cells coated with IgG. And we have complement control cells, which is a smaller bottle, only one per table, usually. And this is an O cell coated with complement. So, how we're going to use this QC form is that we have a saline control. This is to ensure that when we run it with the Coombs cells, 
our coom cells are not spontaneously clumping. Our polyspecific, which has anti-IgG and anti-complement, polyspecific, also reacts with the Coombs control cells because the anti-IgG will bind to the IgG on the check cell. So that should be positive. This should be negative, the saline. And your monospecific anti-IgG should also react with the check cells. Now I'm going to demonstrate those three tubes because we have one for saline, one for poly, and one for IgG. I'm not going to demonstrate the right side because it's exactly the same. The only difference is instead of the check cells, you're using complement check cells, and instead of IgG, you're using complement. You are still using your poly and your saline controls as well. So what I'm going to do is I've already labeled some tubes. So we have our anti-A, B, D, and our control. And then we have our saline, poly, and anti-GG, IgG tubes here. So clear stuff in first. So I'm going to put my anti-A, one drop, into the tube. My anti-B, one drop. Study my hand because I get a little shaky. My anti-D, one drop. And my monoclonal control, one drop. Now, for the other side of my tubes, I need my saline control, so I have a tube marked saline. I squirted some saline in. Two drops, because we always use two drops in our DAT procedure. Our poly, we use two drops in our DAT procedure. So I'll take my poly and put two drops. And finally, I'll take my monospecific IgG and I'll put two drops. Now we're ready to add the cells. Now if you are QCing anything that requires an incubation, I recommend that you get that set up first so it can be incubating while you do the other QC. All right, so my cells have been sitting overnight, so I need to make sure they are well mixed. So I'm taking my A1 and B cells, and I'm going to mix those up. You can do multiple bottles at a time. You don't want to shake it like this, because you want to get those cells off the bottom. Notice my cells are almost off the bottom. All right, so one drop of A1 cells for A, one drop of B cells for B. Notice I, well you probably can't notice because it's not in your screen. I'm putting my reagents back as I use them and I'm putting them back in a logical form, a logical order in the rack. Okay. Now, for my D and my RH control, I'm gonna grab screening cell one or screening cell two. In this first module, it doesn't matter. Resuspend. And I'm going to put one drop, because we always use one drop of commercial cells, into each of the D and RH control tubes. And I missed there. So there, I've hit the tube now. All right, it was one drop I just missed on the first drop. So my apologies. Clean that up real quick. All right. Now, all three of these tubes are going to get those Coombs control cells. So I'm going to mix my Coombs control cells up. And again, we use one drop. So I'm just going to go down the line and go drop, drop, drop. Sound effects are free. All right, so now I'm ready to spin these. So I'm going to need a balance because I have seven tubes. So I'll just use an empty 10 by 75. There's not much volume in these tubes, so an empty one is fine. If I were washing, you would need to make sure there's saline in it. Spin for 20 seconds.
All right, so my centrifuge is done. I'm going to read these in logical pairs as they come out, so I should grab my anti-A and anti-B first. See, I have some nice buttons. I'm going to rotate those, and hopefully I have strong reactions on both. And you'll see the B is off, and now the A is off. Both are floating as a 4+, plus, so you read two, and you record two. So my anti-A was a 4+, plus, my anti-B was a 4+. Plus. Now let's read the D and the RH control. Remember the RH control should be negative. Right away, my top tube is off. Let me show you that a little bit clearer. See how that's floating? That's a 3+. plus. Keep going on the RH control. Looking pretty negative. All right, that's nice and smooth. So we got a 3 plus and a negative. Now let's look at our DATQC. Our saline should be negative and our poly should be positive. Saline's on the top. Right away, you see that poly came off positive. About a 3 plus. Our saline. Now it looks a little granular, but that's because those cells are sticky. Notice how a slight jiggle smoothed it all out. Very uniform and smooth. So that's negative. So we will record in our DATQC. Our saline was negative. Our poly was a 3 plus. Current means your current bottle. New means if you get another one out. And lastly, our IgG. That's a really nice, really nice one there. It's 3 to a 4 plus. All right, so we have graded all those reactions. Now you may have more as the semester goes on. Um, you would do the complement side as well, but I'm not gonna demonstrate that today because we don't have a ton of complement check cells. Over on the right, this is for gel QC and we are not there yet, but this is where you would put your QC for gel. You will have heat blocks uh, to do weak detesting and any sort of incubation. So you would write the number down here, the temp, and it must fall 37 plus or minus one, so just mark a check if it's in range. Mark if you're the charge check for the day for your table. Now, visually inspect your reagents. Did they look okay? Were they growing anything funny or, or chunky? And mine looked acceptable. Did they test okay? And this is where I didn't have any results that didn't work or were too weak, so I'm just gonna write satisfactory. If you had to do some troubleshooting, you can write me a note here. And you're going to date, put your rack number, including A or B, after it, and sign your name. Not initials, but your name. Now, if you're not QC for the day, you'll still need to grab a form because everybody, QC people and non-QC people, need to actually fill out your lot numbers so that I can track which reagents you're using if there's a problem. So across the left here, you have some printed uh, reagent names, and you'll give me the lot number and the expiration date. I prefer my dates written month, day, year, but on these bottles they may be in the European format. So if you're copying it from a bottle, that's fine. When you're signing your name, I prefer month, day, year. If you had to get a second bottle out or there's a reagent not on this list, then you can use any of the blank spots or this right side here to write the reagent name like anti-C, the lot number and the date, expiration date. Again, I only want the lot numbers for the rack you were using in lab. If you give me both racks, I don't know which ones you might have had trouble with. Again, give me your rack number, date, and sign your name. QC sheets get stapled to the top. And if you have any problems or questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you. See you in class.